Alright, here's the scenario. You buy a new gun, and after a few games, you want to change how the gun shoots, but you don't know what to do. Well, here's some teching info I know you'll need. In this video, I'm going to explain the different batteries for AEGs, how they work, and how to decide on which one to buy. A quick disclaimer, I use a lot of electrical terms. I won't explain them all and assume you understand what they mean. If you don't, then look it up. So for AEGs, the gun needs a power source to run the motor. There are several types of batteries based on what the cells are made from. The two most prevalent are the NIM and LiPo. NIM stands for Nickel Metal Hydride. These batteries have both voltage and MA, or milliamperage. These batteries have voltages of 8.4 volts, 9.6 volts, and 10.8 volts. Voltage is the strength of the battery. The more voltage, the quicker the response from the magnets in the motor. The MA is how much energy the battery has. The larger the MA, the longer the battery will last. These batteries were the direct replacement to NiCad or Nickel Cadmium batteries. Nickel Cadmium batteries need to be looked after. You have to completely discharge the battery before charging them because by design they are able to acquire a charge memory where the amount of battery life will decrease. For example, say a NiCad has 1800 Ma and hypothetically you know you have 300 Ma left after playing. If you start charging the battery, you will have now redefined a new zero point. So the battery reaches 1800 Ma, but at 300 Ma, the battery stops functioning like it's dead. So now, math wise, you have a 1500 Ma battery. NIM batteries solved this issue. You can abuse these batteries with really no repercussions. Say the NIM battery has the same stats and you charge it, the battery will still use that final 300 Ma and drain to zero. Now the other type of battery is a LiPo or lithium polymer battery. These need to be handled differently to NIM batteries. Firstly, LiPos have a different voltage set of one cell being 3.7 volts, two cells being 7.4 volts, and three cell being 11.1 .1 volts, and etc. LiPo batteries also have a C rating outside of their MA. The C rating is the effort in which the voltage will be given from the battery. For example, take a baseball and throw it. The ball has weight, and that is voltage. How hard you throw the ball is the C rating. Though the weight of the ball is constant, the effort you can put into that weight will result in a measurable output that can vary. There is also the aspect of a burst rating and a continuous rating. The burst rating is the first few shots will respond quicker than the following shots. This means a greater semi-auto response in comparison to a NIM battery. Milliamperage or MA would be how many times you throw the ball with the same effort till you can. Now with LiPos you will need at minimum a LiPo balance charger because LiPo batteries discharge differently than NIM batteries. Here's a visual. A 9.6 volt NIM battery starts at a little over 9.6 volts and drops at a constant rate curve. A 7.4 volt LiPo battery starts slightly above 7.4 volts then drops to 7.4 volts and flatlines at 7.4 volts for 95% of the life of the battery and right at the end of the MA the voltage drops severely. At that point before you completely drain the battery you must stop firing. Do not drain a LiPo to no power. The cells are living in a sense and require some amount of energy to be recharged. You cannot bring back a LiPo battery if you completely drain it. LiPos also differ from NIM in that they either use a balance charger or a smart charger. LiPos also have two connectors, one that regulates power between the cells and the other to draw out power. For a balance charger, you only need to connect the white power connector. This method will take significantly longer than a smart charger. A smart charger utilizes both connectors. This allows a shorter charge period. Now how do you apply batteries to your builds? For NIM batteries, any stock gun these days can handle up to 9.6 volts. The 9.6 volt will give you the best trigger response and rate of fire if nothing else has changed about the gun. Now 7.4 volt LiPos have a comparable trigger response and rate of fire to a 9.6 volt NIM. The debate is C rating. My vote is a burst rating of 30 and continuous rating of 20. When it pertains to 11.1 .1 volt LiPos, you need to build up the internals to your rifle before using one. 
The motor needs to be replaced to handle the amps coming from the battery. Typically, the motor will overheat and cut out after longer engagements. You need to make sure the gear set is shimmed to reduce strain on the motor. The harder the motor needs to work, the more current will build up and create heat. I would advise you replace your gun's cheap plastic Tamiya connectors with Dean's. They have less resistance because they have a better conductive surface. You will notice an increase in trigger response. You also run the risk of burning out the electrical components in your gun if you don't also consider installing an electronic trigger or at minimum a MOSFET. Both regulate power and can handle the larger current flow. My final rule for 11.1 volt LiPos is never go above 35C. Any higher and it will require the mentioned electronic trigger or MOSFET indefinitely. Thanks for watching this episode of How to Tech Understanding Series. I know this was more info than just a build list, but this kind of knowledge will help you in your purchases for the future. Please let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my info and what you feel I missed that pertains to the subject. If you like this video, please subscribe to get updates on future videos, and please check out my team Cerberus Tactical Airsoft on Facebook. Now get out there and play.